Seen Through Glass and welcome back to LA. Today I'm down at Autotopia LA which is essentially a car storage place. You can probably see there's a ton of amazing cars behind me. I can't show them all to you because as it's car storage they need to be relatively uh, secret with some of the stuff that they have here. The main thing I want to talk about is this. This is the 1,000 horsepower, 1 million dollar, completely custom, timeless customs, vicious Mustang. Now this insane car is officially classed as a resto mod, which is essentially a modified restoration. The reason I'm explaining it to you like you're all three-year-olds is I don't really think in Europe we're doing a lot of this. Any sort of restorations are kind of nut and bolt things, cars being remade to exactly how they were decades before. However, out here in the US and West Coast America, they are modifying their restorations and the Mustang behind me I mean, it isn't really a Mustang anymore. The only original part of the car are the A-pillars. Everything else is essentially new. And when you hear the details about this build, I think you're going to be blown away. But there's some other amazing ones in here. And it's, it's a whole culture that I'm super intrigued by because take this idea and move it across to Europe and do it on a pagoda or a little alpha spider. And could you imagine the things that we could do with old 60s Italian cars, modifying restoration builds? It's got to be done. Anyway, as you can tell, I'm a little bit naive to this whole culture. So to talk us through this car, I'm going to bring in Sean from Autotopia LA. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Sean. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much for having me down here. This yeah, place is man. incredible. Yeah. And this car's even better. So yes, you are now my uh, scene through glass expert on resto mods. I'm the guy. You're going to teach me about Ferrari. I'm going to teach you about American pro touring cars. Deal. So yeah. please just go talk me through this unbelievable creation. Absolutely. And it is an unbelievable one. You know, this one, Jason, the builder, Timeless Customs, just went ballistic on this. And the owner of the car kept saying yes, yes, yes to all the concepts. So it... You said it earlier, but the only I, I find this fascinating that the only thing left from 1965 on this car is the A pillars and Everything else is within the last few years because the intent of this car Although it's a street legal car the intent was to make it nine tenths race car one tenth street car and Jason definitely accomplished that so what you have you start the base of the car is an Art Morrison chassis Art Morrison independent rear so you've got a solid foundation um, it's a C7 front clip, which is from a Corvette. Ride Tech tri triple adjustable coilovers. So you've got all the adjustment you possibly need. That's your platform. And then it starts going really crazy from there. Not like that's not crazy yeah, enough, but now it starts say. going nuts. <laughs> it's the shifting on it. I mean, the transmission, you're taking a six speed MCO sequential six. Which is um, essentially a racing gearbox? It's a full racing gearbox. Wow. I mean, it's the same thing we run in our GT3 uh, Nissan GTRs. Same exact transmission, the MCO six-speed sequential. How it's shifted is what makes it even more extraordinary is it takes air, so there's a small air tank in the, in the trunk of the car, which it makes your paddle shifts work. So it's actually air shifting via the paddle, so your shifts are really, really aggressive. I think one of the... One of the things that was done on this car that's, that's, I'm sure there's other cars that have done this, I haven't heard of them, which is a compound charged car. So we, it started with a, with a Coyote motor, um, same one that's in the 350R before they started calling it the Voodoo motor. But all the internals on this motor were rebuilt, they pulled the flat plane crank out. And the reason they did that is because they were going to push a lot of power through this motor. So you have... The obvious is the Magnuson supercharger up front, but what you don't see, and, and it was one, the builder wanted to be a little secretive, a little, you know, keep sneaky, it a little conspicuous. Sneaky. And so you see these bubbles running down the, the fenders here, which borders on being ugly, but it's purpose built. And everything about this car is purpose built. He kept saying, the builder kept saying, uh, function over form. The form is gonna follow the functionality of the car. So these bubbles hide the plumbing for turbos that run down each side. So this car is not only supercharged, <laughs> but it's also twin turbo. I mean, it's just a behemoth creation of, I mean, it's, it's mad. Absurd. That's why, I mean, the name of this car is perfect. It's called Vicious Mustang and it's, you're gonna see it, dude. This car's, I know you've driven some outrageous stuff, 
this car is a freak show. I mean, it's a total freak show vehicle. It absolutely sounds like it. It is also stunning. I mean, you said function over form, but I have to say I love the way it looks because yeah. it's still I, it's still an iconic 60s Mustang. Yeah. But it looks modern and it looks powerful. This the stance of it. Yeah. Sat here now, not moving, no engine on. It looks quick. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It already looks like it's going fast, Yes, right? it already looks like it's going yeah. fast. But uh, yeah, everything you're saying is absolutely crazy. And, and, and it's crazy. Dude, the details keep going. I mean, we could, you could spend literally an hour on this car just talking through details. Like, like you'll see these, these vents here. A lot of people thought this might be for the turbos or possibly for the supercharger. But it's not. You'll see this pipe here that bends. I mean, the amount of cutting and welding that it took to get this bend to drop down, it cools the front brakes because you got carbon ceramics, so you need air hitting those things, you know? <laughs> it's kind of like a dream build, no, surely? It, it, you know what? That, that was what Chris set out to do was when, when he decided to... Chris is the owner of the car. When Chris decided to kind of, for lack of better terms, blow the wad on it, right? <laughs> it was His idea wasn't about spending a million dollars, although he did. <laughs> yep. uh, I mean, you know, that wasn't the intent was to show everybody how much money I can blow on a car. His intent was to build his ultimate dream 65 Mustang. Like, I'm going to make the coolest Mustang on the planet. And you mentioned there that this is a $1 million build for people like me who are a bit naive to this whole resto mod thing. How on earth do we get to a million dollars? How on? do you spend a million <laughs> bucks on a 65 Mustang? Well, yes, please. You write a lot of checks. Um, <laughs> I mean, obviously, there's been an absolute genius creativity in the, the bodywork and the powertrain and everything. But yep. you were saying, so carbon ceramics, those have got to be what? fifteen, twenty thousand dollars know, brakes alone on this car, you've got a little over $20,000 in brakes. Wow. Think about this. The man hours to, to fabricate everything and produce this car was, you got 10,000 hours and actually adding up more. But 10,000 hours into this car at 105 bucks an hour adds wow. up. But then so you, what, then what was put, the length of build? Sorry, just to interrupt you there. So how yeah. long did this car actually take to make? Well, that's the kind of crazy part was typically a build of this nature would be a two to three year build process. They did this car in just shy of 10 months. Wow. But, you know, the how do you add up that much money into a car like this? You put things like an Emco transmission in it and that, you know, that and the controlling for it. That was forty thousand dollars. The control, the the Motec system on it. What's that? Another forty k. The but it's brakes. the best of the best stuff, right? I mean, like, that Everything was it. On it. There no was expense no spared. Expense spared. Oh well, look, this is absolutely amazing. I'm learning so much, and I'm completely enamored with this car. I think it's stunning. But all I'm going to ask now is, can we go out in it? We're going to go for a ride. Yes. <laughs> Turbos for your 
top end, so you've got low end and high end. Yeah, I mean the shifts are harsh, and the that's shift. but that's the character. Like, you kind of want it. You do, man. It's because the truth is, dude. It's even though it's a street car, like Jason said initially, his his goal was to make it nine tenths race car, one tenth street car, and for me personally, that's what he accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm almost having a heart attack. I'm not entirely sure. That was, okay, so a few weeks ago, I drove an Aventador SV, and I yeah. said it was one of the most visceral experiences I've had yeah. in the car, and the whole time I was like, my heart is beating so fast. This just pooped on that experience. Yeah. Like, that made the Aventador feel like a, like a Ford Fiesta. Yeah. Unbelievable, thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. I've enjoyed man. it. I mean, it's just this day has been incredible. Um, so Sean actually has his own YouTube channel, Autotopia LA. Is that the actual, that's the handle, isn't it? It is, yeah. I'll put a link below. Um, but you should check it out because there are some incredible cars in here and he's always doing cool stuff. And that's a prime example of the kind of yeah, content right? that you're making. So please go over and check that out. Again, a huge thanks for having me down. More Absolutely. than welcome, honestly. Anytime thank you're in you the so country, much. dude, I promise you, we'll do some really more stuff. It. Yeah. Give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come.